This video is a demonstration of how to do a weight and balance calculation and a weight shift calculation. The questions on the review are questions 35 through 39 and uh, 35 is complete a weight and balance provided separately. Find the total weight, the total moment, the center of gravity, and remember to mark the position of the CG and weight to verify if the airplane is loaded properly. Um, we'll use the weight and balance uh, envelope in order to do that. Question 36 is, is the airplane over the maximum gross weight? Question 37, is the CG within operating limits? And 38 is perform the following weight shift calculation. We're going to move 40 pounds from the rear seat to the front seat and determine what the new CG is and then determine whether that new CG is within operating limits. Okay, so let's take a look at the weight and balance calculation. What we're given here are the weight balance numbers. Uh, the empty weight of the airplane and the empty moment. And we're given the weight of the front seat passengers along with the arm the weight of the rear seat passengers along with the arm, baggage weight and the arm, number of gallons of fuel and the arm, and from that we need to calculate the moment for each item and then we'll add up the moments to come up with the total moment, add the total weight, and divide the total moment by the total weight to get the center of gravity. So let's start. We have uh, 300 pounds in the front seats, and we'll multiply that by 90.6. 300 times 90.6 is 27,180. We have 60 pounds in the rear seats, 128 inches of arm, so 60 times 128 is 7,680. We have 15 pounds in the luggage compartment. The arm is 143.7 inches, so 143.7 times 15 is 2,155.5. Now, we have gallons of gas. Remember, we have to convert that to weight. Each gallon of aviation fuel weighs six pounds, so 20 times six is 120 pounds. We multiply 120 pounds by the arm of 103.5 to get 12,420. That's the moment for the fuel. Now all I have to do is add up the weight, add up the moment. So the total moment is 207,434. Point one. The total weight is 2,115 pounds. I divide the total moment by the total weight and the CG is 98.077. And now we just have to see if that falls within the weight and balance limitations of the airplane. So we'll take a look at the weight and balance envelope. And you can find this weight and balance envelope in the pilot's operating handbook. So here's the envelope, and what we need to do is we need to find the weight and the CG on this envelope. We need to draw a line from the CG, which is 98.077. So I'm going to draw a line straight down from here, just, just a dike above 98. And I'm going to draw that line straight down until we get to our weight. Here's 2,000. 2,100, so 2,115 is probably around, right around there. So we'll draw a straight line over, and where they intersect is where the airplane falls in the weight and balance envelope, weight and balance limitations. And we find that the weight and balance, the CG does fall within the weight and balance limitations when it falls within this envelope or this uh, graph. As a matter of fact, because it falls below this line, 
it is within the weight and balance limits for a utility category aircraft. Because this aircraft is both um, normal and utility. So the answer is yes, it does fall within the weight and balance limitations. And the maximum weight, you can see here at the top of the envelope, top of the graph, is 2,535 pounds. Our airplane weighed 2,115 pounds, so it's well below the maximum gross weight. So the next thing we need to do is the weight shift calculation. And the weight shift calculation, or the weight shift formula, is the uh, weight shifted divided by the total weight equals the change in CG divided by the change in arm. We're going to be moving 40 pounds So 40 pounds divided by 2,115, which is the total weight of the airplane, equals the change in CG. So that's what we're interested in, change in CG. And we're going to divide the change in CG by the change in the arm. So if we're moving something from the rear seat to the front seat, we're going from an arm of 143 point, I'm sorry, 128.0 to 90.6. So we're actually subtracting from our arm. So 128 minus 90.6 is 37.4. So we'll use a negative 37.4 because again we're subtracting from our arm. So the change in CG will be minus 37.4. Okay, let's, let's uh, divide 40 by 2,115. 40 divided by 2,115 equals 0.0189125. So that equals the change in CG over negative 37.4. Okay, now we need to solve for this, the change in CG. How do we do that? Well, we're dividing here by minus 37.4, so I can multiply both sides by minus 37.4 to solve for the change in CG. So minus 37.4 on this side, minus 37.4 on this side. So the um, change in CG equals minus point seven zero seven three. Okay, so that will be the change in the center of gravity. So now all we have to do is subtract that from our center of gravity before we did the weight shift to get a new CG 98.077 minus 0.7073 is 97.3697. And if we look at the center of gravity envelope, we can see <coughs> That 97.367.3697 is still within the center of gravity. 97.3697 is probably right about there. So if we draw our line straight down to the weight, we're still well within the center of gravity. And that's how you do the weight shift calculation.